Sure, say what? Um, it, was, it was a thought I had, is speaking of like mental, I was thinking the other day about how um, drug use, steroid use and whatnot has made all of these guys really, really strong and, 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 and um, contributed to pushing the outer limits of human potential. Mm -hmm. And now people who, who are growing up, they, their limitations have been, have been pushed larger mm -hmm. by these people who use these steroids who push the human potential. And so now maybe, theoretically I'm thinking, they can reach those limits without using steroids because they've seen it's humanly possible. Like, are you seeing stuff like that? Like, well, I mean, we're dealing, with, we're dealing with two issues here. We're dealing with you know, an anabolic issue and we're dealing with young athletes looking toward elite athletes as, um, I don't want to say role models or mentors, but as um, comparisons, okay? The problem with that is, and you know, this is my, my feeling and the, you know, my, probably my exclusive feeling. 90% of the professional athletes are gonna be professional athletes with or without drugs just because of genetics and skills. Okay. Maybe at the very most 20% are there because they actually worked hard. Okay. Um, how many pro football players do you see there? Five, six. You know, so when you're dealing with kids and they, they say they want to be pro football players or whatever it's going to be, the last thing I ever think that you can do to a kid is destroy their dream. All right. They have thousands of people, not thousands, hundreds of people in their own network, destroying their dream every day. You know, people tell them, well, you need to focus on your studies, which isn't a bad thing. All right, but if they want to be a pro football player, I'm going to tell them, you know what? Fuck yeah. Go for it. Because how do I know what that guy's genetic structure is? It's seven years old. You know, hell, he could change his mind. You know, so I, do, I, play, I play games with people all the time. I play with kids all the time. It's like, man, come here. And I'm like grabbing his calves. Man, that's unbelievable, you know? Grabbing his legs. You know what? I've been around a lot of pro players, man. You have the physical structure to just kill it if you work hard, you know, and, and put everything into it. Now they're walking away like, holy crap, you know, this guy really knows his stuff. Maybe I can do this. Because everybody else around him saying, well, you know, you need to be realistic, you know, you might not make your team, and all this other kind of bull crap. Um, the late matures are the ones that generally are going to end up at the higher level. So the kids that aren't making the team in junior high, they're going to be, if they stay, the best in high school. The only pe reason the people that are playing in junior high is because they mature faster. All right, what generally happens, and the takeaway is, the kids that aren't playing, that are sitting on the bench, usually what the coaches do is, well, just go over there and you know, hit the bag. Go over there, you know, push the sled. Go over there and work on your drills. They're doing skill, 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 skill. And then the coaches are taking the, the more mature athlete who's stronger and faster and saying, hey, let's run this play, let's run this play, let's run this play. Well, that works really good until those kids over there mature. And now they're just as strong and just as fast, but they got one other thing, skills. That's why you see the great junior high player never even play in high school. You know, they're the ones smoking crack on the corner you know, because they got blown away. And people will say, man, I don't know what happened to him. He was awesome when he was younger. Well, what happened is he never had the skill development. Um, so human potential is a lot higher than what we think it is with drugs, without drugs, okay? Much higher, it's always been higher. I've seen people lift weights and powerlifting that I thought were on drugs and would argue it. You know, some of my other people, like, this guy's totally full of shit. There is no way he's drug free. You know, until the guy would come up to me and say, you know what, I think I'm going to start taking drugs now. But then he does, and his total goes up 400 pounds. Like, holy shit, he did that drug free? Totally changed my philosophy on what the actual human potential is. The human potential is limited by the, the human mind. And it takes a very, very, very strong, rare, special person to break the barrier, to break the you know, four-minute mile. 
you know, to be, you know, the Lance Armstrong or whatnot. Would you argue that the people who take, I mean, is there an argument that the people who take the drugs instead of being lambasted and looked down upon should actually get credit for actually, they're like the astronauts pushing the, the, the frontier, you know, like they're opening up the human potential, you know? I think drugs shouldn't be really a part of the issue because in most sports, it is part of the sport. Um, so it's, you know, I'll sit there and say it's an irrelevant factor, you know, based upon whatever sport it is. It's there, okay? It's just those who get caught are labeled, you know, the bad person, but yet everybody seems to forget everybody he's competing against is using too, you know? So don't fucking say this guy's a hero and this guy's a villain, you know, when they're both doing it. You know, say this guy got caught, this guy did and then start to question the politics that are going on behind that. Is the drug testing fair? Is it not fair? What it's gonna be? Drugs have been a part of sport since the 60s. That's not ever gonna go away. You know, whenever you're dealing with a competitive mindset and people who, I, I call it being locked in, people who get locked into a vision, all right, that's it, man. That's their drive, that's their passion. Critics don't matter, this don't matter. They're gonna do whatever it fucking takes to be the best at what they do. Okay, most people in society will never understand that because they've never had passion about anything. Okay, people who have had passion about things and worked their ass off for it will totally get it. Um, are they pushing it because of the drugs? No, they're pushing it because of who they are. Drugs are just one of the tools. I mean, other things advance in technology as far as, you know, swimsuits, powerlifting gear, you know, the surfaces somebody's running on. I mean, sport just keeps advancing, and it's going to keep advancing. You know, at some point in time, it's going to start to advance at a little bit um, lower level. You know, world records are kind of being broken, you know, every Olympics. But I'm telling you, it's going to continue that way because what's going to change is it will leave anabolic steroids, and it's going to go into gene therapy. It's going to go into some, some other crazy shit we don't even know about yet. You know, which is going to go in there, which is going to push it again. And, you know, at the same time with, um, if you use anabolics as an example, and I'm not pro nor con anabolics, okay? Um, I think that it all depends. I, I think it's, you know, I read one time in an article, it's like, it's like your ace card, okay? If you're an athlete, you got one ace card to play. When are you going to play it? All right, if you have to play that ace card to make your high school football team, you're probably not going to play in college, okay? If you got to flip that ace card, you know, to, to go to college and play, you're probably not going to play pro. You know, if you got to flip it while you're training for the combine, then you're probably going to go pro, okay? It doesn't mean you're going to stay pro for very long. If you're going to be a pro for five years in the NFL, and then you flip it to pull another five years, now you're making another $10, $15 million. It's all a matter of when do you feel you have to flip that card because you can only flip it once. You know what I'm saying? It's going to give you an increase, but it's not going to take you to two levels higher. It's going to take you up a notch. You know, everything else is going to be up to you with that. So the problem I have with it is if you do have high school kids that are flipping that card. The other thing would be, you know, high school kids or basically, and I, I get criticized for this a lot, Basically, anybody who's taken it just for vanity reasons, who's not a bodybuilder, you know, and my point with that is, you know what, it's hard enough for the people who really do want, need to take it to find it, and there you are fucking taking it from them. I mean, it's hard to find clean, good stuff. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah, this fucking high school kid who just wants to have biceps is buying it all up, you know, <laughs> meanwhile, the guy fucking training for the Olympics can't find his shit, you know, are you going to be a fucking patriot or not, you know? If you're going to be American, fucking let this shit go to where it's supposed to go. Um, that's, that's awesome. You know, that I, have, that I have a problem with that, okay? I have a problem with, you know, people who want to flip it too soon. Just because you have a sticking point doesn't mean you're not going to go any further. It means you need to get smarter. You need to try something different. You know, there's, there's thousands of people out there now with the Internet who are more than willing to share information to people that have a question. Um, in that regard. Uh, you asked earlier about um, anabolics in the CrossFit games. 
Well, the one really odd thing, you know, with the CrossFit Games is it's, um, I don't know, you know, and I've been around um, people who use anabolic since I was 13 years old. I'm 41 now, you know, so I have a pretty good idea what people are taking for different sports. I don't know what the hell to tell somebody to take who wanted to do a competitive event that one movement may last three seconds for one rep, another one may be a complex of two minutes explosively, another one may be a five minute complex, and then a fucking 20 minute run. What are you gonna take? Are you gonna take EPO, growth hormone, insulin? What the fuck are you gonna take? You, you can't take, and if you took all of it, you're gonna go broke. You better have a couple hundred thousand dollars a year job. It's, you can't. You know, and if you take, if you take something to fill a weakness in that void, you know, say they want to take something just for the strength. Well, it's going to help the strength, but it's probably going to hurt the long endurance. Okay, because hell, just the nature of the training, doing long endurance work will have a negative effect on strength. You know, um, the only aspect of conditioning that really will never have a negative effect on any others is maximal strength development. Okay, maximal strength development will have a positive effect on almost every component of fitness except maybe flexibility. Okay, that's the only one that's going to have some true carryover to everything. 